when we have the leadership capacity to carry it, so when the lamp is ready and prepared and our wicks are trimmed and we're bringing our best, we're doing the work, we're paying the price, then and only then we are truly on fire. Well, let me just read you the verse. I'll just read you the verse and we'll, we'll go from there. It's Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 10. It's the story about the 10 maidens or the 10 virgins. And it says this, I'm reading from the Passion. It says, when my coming draws near, this is Jesus talking, when my coming draws near, heaven's kingdom realm will be compared to 10 maidens who took their oil lamps and went outside to meet the bridegroom and his bride. Five of them were foolish and ill-prepared, for they took no extra oil for their lamps. Five of them were wise, for they took flasks of oil with their lamps. When the bridegroom didn't come when they expected, they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. Then suddenly, in the middle of the night, they were awakened with the shout, Get up! The bridegroom is here. Come out and have an encounter with him. And I love how the Passion uses that phraseology, have an encounter with him. So all the girls got up, they trimmed their lamps, they trimmed their wicks, but the foolish ones were running out of oil. And they said to the five wise ones, share your oil with us because our lamps are going out. We can't, they replied. We don't have enough for all of us. You'll have to go and buy some for yourselves. And while the five girls were out buying oil, the bridegroom appeared and those who were ready and waiting, which is important to underline, were, were escorted inside with him and the wedding party, with the wedding party to enjoy the feast. And then the door was locked. And so in this story, the oil represents the infilling power, presence and provision of, and, and the direction of the Holy Spirit. And the lamps are the vessels that carry the oil. Does that make sense? And the lamps are you and I and the church. We, we carry the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And what I want to do um, just in this next couple of minutes with us as leaders is I want to challenge us as leaders of Beyond Church and for those who are going to listen and watch back later with just this one question. Are we trimming our wicks and filling our lamps? Are we both trimming our wicks and filling our lamps? Because what I know is that our leaders of Beyond Church, particularly with where we're going as a church and what we're already seeing, I feel like I'm kind of speaking into the past because after those good reports about some of those phenomenal things that have happened, you know, the, the Spirit of God is moving already across the life of the church. And yeah, I'm just super encouraged by that. And we do need to continue to focus on what matters most, which is the presence of God, the power of God, the provision of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit um, in our lives and in our church and in our teams. And I would say to you, as you lead you know, your teams and as you lead in church and bring influence in any area of leadership, that you are first and foremost uh, ready, waiting, willing to receive the oil of the spirit of God in your life. And one of the things that verse alludes to is that oil doesn't come cheap. If your pursuit, I want to just challenge you with this thought that if your pursuit of the presence and the power and the provision of the Holy spirit is coming easily, it's cheap oil. And, and we know that oil doesn't come cheap. And the five wise maidens said, you need to go and buy your own. And if you're not paying a price for the, holy spirit to be at work in your life i would probably challenge you that it's not it's not the holy spirit you're probably still trying to accomplish things within your own strength and so i want to say to our leaders over this next season while we're in this in prayer um, focus message series to like use this as an opportunity to rearrange some things in your life and build margin into your week into your month to be in prayer like seriously in prayer, in the presence of God, uh, in worship, so that you are receiving and paying the price to receive the, the oil that, that comes from the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. Uh, so just think about that. You know, it, is it coming cheap? Am I just flicking on a bit of worship music in the car on the way to work? Or am I just saying a quick prayer to God while I'm, you know, sitting down before I watch a movie at night? Or am I, I mean, what, 
I just think it's a season where we've got to be thinking about, yeah, it's, it's, it's a season to pay the price to receive all uh, of the spirit that God wants to give me. Uh, and then the other thing that I love in that verse is that we, it says that we cannot draw oil from the lamps of others and other leaders. Now, let me say this. We can learn to do the other things from other leaders. So we can learn to trim our wicks, but we can't, we can't take the oil that's in the lamp of other leaders. And so, you know, we listen to stuff, watch stuff uh, from other leaders, go to conferences, but you can't take the oil that they've got and apply it in for your own life. You've got to go and get it yourself. And I, I really want to lean on this idea that over this next you know, few months as we wrap up this year, I, I, I kind of want our leaders just to be dripping with the presence of God um, all over their lives. And that only happens when you go after it yourself. Um, you can't copy it. You can't fake it. You can't steal it. You can't take it. You've got to pay the price and you have to pay it yourself. Um, so I say that to say, be responsible for your own spiritual temperature. Uh, only you can fill your lamp with oil. Uh, so trimming your wicks and buying oil. We actually need to do both of those things. We, we can't just walk around with a big jar full of oil uh, because we need to lead lives with trimmed wicks. And that is doing things like leading with excellence, um, you know, and this story isn't saying um, that a functional and excellent vessel or leader isn't necessary. You need an excellent vessel. You need, a, you need an excellent um, lamp and you need it to be prepared and ready. So we need to be excellent at maintaining the leadership gift that's on our life. You know, we need to still do the things like read, you know, things that are going to teach us and encourage us and direct us. We need to be studying like we would always do. We need to be developing our leadership skills. So bringing excellence in every area of our leadership life, you know, executing tasks well and on time. Uh, all the things that are systems and structures, we still need all of that because we still need to be wick trimmers. But if we spend all of our time preparing the vessel, trimming the wick, with an empty vessel, it's simply foolishness. It's unwise. It's the unwise maiden. And it's a, it's a lamp that looks good. It's ready for what's next, but has no power. And why is it so important to do both? And I just want to finish with this thought. And you will have time if you guys want to contribute something as well. But why is it important to do both? To have a full lamp, full of oil, and to be doing what's uh, structurally important, systematically important, uh, with your gift and with your professional development. Why are both those important? Because we, when we lead full of the Holy Spirit, when we lead full of uh, the power, the presence, the provision of God in our life, when we lead full of the Holy Spirit and when we have the leadership capacity to carry it, so when the lamp is ready and prepared and our wicks are trimmed and we're bringing our best, we're doing the work, we're paying the price, then... And only then we are truly on fire and it lights up a path to the direction of the bridegroom. The, the, the lamps were so the, were so the uh, maidens could find their way to Jesus. And so we need to be prepared system. We have prepared uh, systematically, structurally. You personally need to have your leadership gift uh, growing and developing and you need to be full of the holy spirit so that not only are you seeing jesus clearly but you're able to light a path toward jesus for every other person that you are leading and so if we are going to be a church that genuinely points people to jesus as the one and only hope of humanity we need to do more than just have our systems and structures right which i actually think as a church we do very well and this is why i'm leaning on this aspect of the trimming the wicks and filling the lamps. We also need to be the church that is full of leaders who are full to overflowing with oil, with the Holy Spirit.